Well, I was brought up in Hampshire. Two of the treats of my childhood were going to see Southampton play on the coach and going to North Devon every year for my holidays. Um, a little later, I went to the, the Slade. And after I left the Slade, I went back to the same little village that I used to go on holiday to. I began painting the rocks and the beach about 40 years ago, I guess, and I've carried on painting them every year. This year, because of lockdown, I thought it would be a chance to do something different. The first pictures I was ever pleased with were pictures of footballers, so I thought I'd have another go at those. Partly, I think, due to the nostalgia about thinking about crowds, about great sweaty, heaving crowds pressing against you. Um, but also, I just wanted to have a little think about loyalties and tribes and the ideas that I was used to. And I thought that football might be a kind of playful way of dealing with those. So there are certain, you know, I'm a lower class lefty interested in um, early modernism, all those things that are part of my identity. I just wanted to have a little think about. And when I began to paint these footballers, and footballers in themselves are quite a modernistic um, subject matter, uh, I began to think of, remember, this, uh, these different loyalties I had as a kid. So there was Southampton, who I went to go and see, but then I was also very interested in Manchester United because they were the most glamorous club at the time. So in the end, I switched allegiances. And uh, I was felt slightly guilty about this, but I know why I did it. It was because they were more glamorous. And this push and pull, like, because I've lived in North Devon for 40 years, there's something about living in a place that's slightly, you know, off the, out of the mainstream, as it were, if you want to think in those terms. And so I began to think about this idea about local versus international and the kind of loyalties that I have in terms of how I paint pictures. Um, the, and it, 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 it's, it's kind of surprising whenever you begin to concentrate on something because immediately you begin to look at a particular subject, all sorts of other things begin to crowd in and other memories began to um, come up for me. So there was the memory of how, uh, when I was small, somebody died, a, little, a, a kid who was, very, who was just a couple of years younger than me. His dad had a spare ticket for the Southampton Manchester United game. So I went with him instead of his son. Bobby Charlton scored and he began to weep. And, and even though I was very small, I kind of sensed that there was something about that he was weeping because he still felt there was something beautiful in the world and that his son wasn't able to see it anymore. So as a child, in, when you went to a football match, you're often encountering a very different world, a very adult world in some ways. And it was incredibly exciting. And some of those emotions by just doing paintings about football began to come back and then in turn began to influence the way I was painting the landscapes that I normally paint. And in turn, it was evoking the memories associated with the, all these years of painting a particular place. So, uh, for instance, when I came down, down to paint uh, the beach for the first time after I left the Slade, I thought I was coming to a place that was very rural and isolated and away from the, the sort of big guns of, uh, of the art world because I didn't want to belong to any particular um, tribe or have any loyalties to a particular set of um, artists. I wanted to be on my own. But then when I got there, there were things like there was a, a listening station about a mile away that I learnt was very high on the nuclear hit parade. It was a big target because it was a one of only four that was controlling or monitoring global communications. 
there were all sorts of other people in the area who I was very surprised by and it suddenly didn't seem to be um, an escape from something but an, ar an arrival and what I had orig originally thought of as being a six month um, trip turned into 40 years and counting. Um, so I'm delighted to be showing in what is such a fantastic space, a new space for North Devon. And, um, and even if, uh, and I hope people will be able to actually see the pictures. Uh, but in the meantime, it's, it's a matter of uh, seeing what can be conveyed via other means. All these pictures have got, although I'm really concentrating on colour and on form and on space, they always have some kind of story attached to them. Um, so the pictures of St Nectan's well, that's um, apparently these wells, they, they sprang up because a saint had his head chopped off, ran along the cliffs and wherever a drop of blood fell, uh, a spring of fresh water would burst forth from the ground. And, uh, and given some of the thinking around um, certainly the romantic tradition, which I think I'm a, a part about the role of um, the intellect and how in some ways you have to um, stop thinking and then the, uh, the springs of fresh water burst forth the well has got part of that mythology embedded in it. And so these ideas about, um, almost like derived from people like Matisse or Picasso, this thing of the, the well of inspiration coming when you stop thinking. Although, of course, both those artists were very cerebral in their own way. And that links to a certain extent with the footballers Footballers make extraordinary mathematical calculations almost instantaneously. And they are using a different part of their intellect than, uh, than those who would want to take out a bit of paper and work it out. It's an extraordinary mix of the physical in which you have to be able to hit a ball at the right strength and the right speed, but at the same time you have to realise where the other member of your team is coming from. All those incredible calculations can be done instantaneously and although I might not be as good at painting as a professional footballer is at playing football, there are still similar kind of decisions that you're making around space about how each colour relates to everything else, how the colour has a certain shape and place on the canvas that has to relate to another shape and how they all have to come together in the end in a great uh, unity.